Hey there, Dr. Anna Maria Helt here, herbalist and escaped research scientist. My apologies for being less frequent with my videos. Uh, life is, as it is for all of us, getting really busy and it's been harder to get my butt down in front of this camera. But here I am. Uh, this week I'm not talking about mushrooms and I'm not talking about wild plants in the garden. Instead, I'm talking about a research study that just came out in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. It's called Comparative Effects of Low-Dose Resuvastatin, Placebo, and Dietary Supplements on Lipids and Inflammatory Biomarkers. And uh, it's a pretty small study, actually, in terms of the number of people in it, but it's getting a lot of attention. Um, and I am using this as an example in bias of how studies of pharmaceutical drugs versus natural products are handled by the news media here in the US, and also to point out a common study design flaw in uh, pharmaceutical sponsored or pharmaceutical company sponsored studies that are looking at botanicals um, and other natural products. And that flaw is study length. Now, um, I am an herbalist, so yeah, I am biased. I'm an herbalist. I work with plants. I work with mushrooms, not in the form generally used in this study. Uh, a lot of us don't use these sort of encapsulated nutraceutical products uh, that are commercially available, uh, but I am an herbalist and have been for quite some time. I'm also a former research scientist, and I used to work in pharmacology many years ago before I even went to grad school. I spent three years working in chemotherapy drug pharmacology. So I'm not anti-drug. I have people in my life that are here because of their pharmaceutical drugs that are uh, life-sustaining. Um, so I am somewhere in the gray area between those people in uh, the natural world who think all drugs suck and people on the pharmaceutical side who think that natural stuff is all bogus, right? I don't think either of those is uh, based in reality. I'm somewhere in between and that where that in between varies <laughs> depending on what kind of mood I'm in. Anyway, uh, so there are my biases. The study is comparing one of the stronger statin drugs, though in a low dose, rosuvastatin, with placebo and with a variety of dietary supplements that are commercially available. And their major endpoint is looking at whether the levels of LDL-C go down, LDL cholesterol. Now, to be clear, LDL is not cholesterol, despite what you see all over the place. LDL is a, uh, a carrier, like a suitcase that carries cholesterol from the liver where it's made out to the uh, parts of the body where it's needed. I always look like I'm staring off into the distance, so I'm just moving the camera a little bit here. Um, so LDL is made in the liver, even if you're, uh, or LDL, cholesterol is made in the liver. Cholesterol is made in the liver. Even if you are a vegan, your liver makes cholesterol. LDL is the suitcase that carries it around the body to use cholesterol as the base molecule for sex hormones and other corticosteroids um, to get cholesterol to the cell membranes that need it for stabilization, to the nervous system where cholesterol is an important molecule. So LDLC is being measured in this study. Uh, HSCRP or high sensitive C-reactive protein is another marker being used in this study as an endpoint. Uh, levels of CRP can change pretty dramatically when somebody's really sick, they have something serious going on, but in your average healthy adult, they tend to stay stable for a long period of time um, and can be used to see if something is going on that is increasing inflammation, for example. Um, so anyway, LDLC decreased in the statin group compared to placebo, but did not decrease in any of the supplement groups compared to placebo in this study. Um, high, sensitivity, high sensitivity CRP did not change, did not decrease statistically significantly in any of the groups relative to placebo, so no effect there. Um, now, uh, let's get into uh, some things with this study. So this was a study sponsored by AstraZeneca, the maker of resuvastatin. Um, and though NPR's report on this study said that the study was being independently done, despite that funding, one of the study authors is in fact from AstraZeneca. So I just thought that should be pointed out. Um, the study wasn't, so you hear about 
placebo-controlled double-blind studies. This study wasn't completely blinded only because on the subject side of things, the people getting the various treatments and placebo, those pills were all different sizes and shapes and people got different pill numbers. So this doesn't necessarily mean people were able to guess what kind of pill they were getting, but it means it wasn't completely blinded. Um, that may or may not be a big deal, depending on your own opinion. Uh, the major issue with design is the length of the study, 28 days. 28 days is ridiculously short when it comes to studying any kind of natural product. Um, so if you look at studies of herbs or like nutraceuticals, botanicals, whatever, um, and blood lipids, most of them are three months or longer. A lot of them are three months, six months, a year. Some are eight to 12 weeks as well, but that's still significantly longer than 28 days. Um, so comparing a drug, a single concentrated active chemical, to more chemically complex supplements in a 28-day time frame just doesn't really make sense. And the best way I can think of at explaining that is it's like testing whether somebody on a motorcycle versus somebody on a bicycle can get from Cincinnati to Detroit, but only letting the test last for five hours. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, my apologies. Um, so the speed of effects don't necessarily mean efficacy when we're talking about chronic issues. Now, uh, some specific things here. Now, curcumins were one of the supplements tested in the study. It's, these are often referred to as turmeric. They're not turmeric. They are one class of chemical constituent found in turmeric that are popular as a supplement. There are many other bioactive constituents in turmeric that tend to be left out of these concentrated extracts. But regardless, I'm going on a tangent, um, there have been longer randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trials looking at these concentrated curcumins and LDLC, and some of them have seen reductions and some of them have not in these longer studies. Different preps, different study design, I don't know. But my point here is that this current study that's getting a lot of attention didn't do anything to clarify those issues, why some are getting positive results, why some are not, because it's too short. It's not even as long as those studies were. So kind of inconclusive. Cinnamon was another thing tested in this study, and it looked to be plain old powdered cinnamon encapsulated, and the dose was relevant to that, which is traditionally used by herbalists. Uh, however, uh, the indication is not relevant. Cinnamon isn't, in terms of its traditional use, used for blood lipids. Um, it's not something I ever learned as an herbalist from any of my teachers. There may be some people out there that use it for cholesterol support, but that's not coming out of traditional usage. Um, so I'm not sure why that was included in the study. Uh, one of the other things tested was fish oil. Um, they used a commercially available fish oil that you can get at your local big box store or drug store or what have you. Um, and the capsule is 1200 milligrams of fish oil, but of that only 320 milligrams of it are omega-3s, which are generally considered to be, you know, the beneficial part of fish oil. So things like EPA and DHA that you get in fish or, fish or algal oil. And so longer studies have looked at omega-3s in lowering the risk for atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, which is what LDL is used as a risk marker for. So clogged arteries, you know, leading to stroke, clogged arteries leading to a heart attack. Some studies have found that omega-3s from fish oil do lower LDLs, uh, do uh, reduce the risk, rather, um, of atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease when given on top of statins. Um, so they further reduce the risk with those statins. Other studies have found no effect there um, of these omega-3s. Uh, some data suggests that EPA specifically, um, a type of omega-3 may have an effect. So not mixed omega-3s, but EPA. But again, this isn't a slam dunk as of yet. My point here though, is that this study that I'm currently focusing on in this video doesn't add anything to that because it's too short. And the dose of EPA in this study is super low. Only 320 milligrams of that capsule that people got are omega-3s and about half of that is going to be DHA and half of that is gonna be EPA. So it's just not really adding anything. It's not super conclusive. 
there are a few other supplements that were studied. I'm only going to mention one more, red yeast rice, which is actually not something I have any experience taking myself. Um, there have been longer trials, a 24-week placebo-controlled study, for instance, finding a reduction of LDL-C. Uh, another one uh, that was an eight-week trial, so shorter but still longer than 28 days, that found an effect compared to placebo and compared to a different compound that was equal to placebo. There was a 12-week study as well that found an effect, um, a small three-month study, uh, but again, not consistent across all of these studies. So I'm just wondering again, what does a 28 day study hope to accomplish when um, even in longer studies, what's going on is not clear. Some positive results, some not positive results. So I'm not saying that any of the particular supplements used in this current 2022 study would have done anything in a longer study. That's not my point. Um, but as an herbalist and a scientist, when I hear the lead author in his interview on NPR just make the blanket statement that the supplements are not effective, I don't think you can conclude that from this study. In my opinion, the proper conclusion would have been that they weren't effective in the 28-day time frame of the study. So it kind of begs the question of what was the point of the study, um, other than it's getting a lot of press. I'm running out of light here. Anyway, uh, the bias I'm alluding to is a difference in media coverage looking at pharmaceutical studies versus, say, herbal studies as an example. So this study that I'm talking about today is not a large study. There are only 25 subjects in the placebo group, 25 in the statin group, 25 in each of the supplement groups. Small study, but it's getting headlines. Take an herbal study just as an example or an fish oil study, I don't care. Um, if there were only 25 people getting the herb or the fish oil or what have you, or even 50 people and only 25 to 50 people in the placebo group, that study would not receive headlines. Um, even if the result were positive, it would be considered too small. It would be considered underpowered. So there's kind of a difference in how um, different studies are viewed in the news media and even amongst uh, the research scientists, at least here in the US, um, that I like to point out to my students. And so um, I'm nerding out on all of this in preparation for an upcoming class I have in the coming year, uh, teaching herbalists and other interested people how to critically read research studies and really how to critically evaluate any kind of data. Anyway, uh, I will shut up now. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, especially if you've made it to the end of this uh, pretty tedious <laughs> video. And if you have any questions or maybe you want the references that I used um, for this video, let me know in the comments section. Take care, y'all. Be well.